old women in our village. Old women in my village say, the sea is always hungry. They say, that's why it comes without fail to lick the edges of the barrier sand rolling through wraps of mangrove, smashing the salt-steeped flood on garden cliffs, breaking itself against rock faces, landlocks, hills, reaching through to the fields, forests, grazelands, villages by the water, country lanes, towns, cities where people walk about, as in a dream, death to the wind, shashing the seas, sibilant sighing. Someday we come, someday we come, someday we come. Only the old women hear the ceaseless morning, watching rain drying in the sun, tending the pot, or gutting a fish for the fire, fingers bloody, clothes stained, scent of the ocean rising from the mangled flesh to their lungs. Nights as they sit on their mats, rubbing their knees, waiting for ease to come and sleep. They hear the sea, endlessly muttering. Someday, someday, someday. Nudging the old men beside them, their mates, empty eyed seafarers, survivors of many storms in the sea's vast loneliness, now half lost in their old age with the household clutter. Old women in my village nod to themselves and say, one uncharted day, the sea will open its mouth and drink in a child playing in the sand. Fishermen with their nets, great ships laden with cargo, and still starving, they say, suck up cities, towns, villages, one huge swallow to slake its craving. When or how it would happen, who knows, the women say. But this much is true. No plea for kindness can stop it. Nodding their heads this way and that way, turning their ears to the endless mumbling. On nights when rain pours as if the very gate of heaven is open and nothing to stop a shivering earth from death by drowning, people in my village tell this story. An empty house in the Gado street, a tricycle stops by a locked gate, a man alights, his wife, an infant held close to her chest, a boy of five or six gripping her skirt with bony fingers. Delgado, that one word the man said, brought them to this unlit house on this lonely street in our village. Not a sound to the ride. Right. Now the man digs for pear in his pockets and comes up with a few Clap shells, holds them out like coins to the driver. I'll get the fare, says the man, unlocks the gate, and enters the dark house. 
everyone following him. He never returns with the pair. Seized by suspicion, the terrified driver flees, pursued by the reek of fish in the wind. This tale goes the rounds of Cardo's motor shop and Thais Calduhan, wherever it is that drivers go to pass the slow time of day, or when rain forces them to seek shelter. The story grows bigger with every telling. Barnacles on the man's neck, his hands, his ears, the woman's hair stringing like seaweeds, the infant in her arms, swaddled in kelp. Did he have fish tail instead of feet? The boy's fluorescent stare as though her eyes, his eyes were well to plankton. Was that a starfish dangling from a string on his chest? Sneezed his snakes, wriggling in and out of his pockets. They say the house in Delgado Street waits, empty and dark, as on the day 10, 11 years ago, when the MV Doña Paz, with 2,000 on board, became grub for the sea. Old women in my village remember rows of coffins on the dark side, odor of rot in the air, waves everywhere, and for a month at least, funeral processions winding down every day in the streets of the city. No driver in our village claims ownership of his tail, yet it moves like a feckless wind, blowing breath to breath, growing hair, hand, fist, with every telling. Blows also, no doubt, to grip us cold. We cower, thinking of it, grateful as we seldom are for the steady on the land, the dry bed on which we lie at night, the warm body beside us to hold against the tyranny of rain, pelting our fragile shelters. This is our habit, those of us who walk on land and breathe air, while we bear in our mind the seepless sea, endlessly Rumbling, rumbling, Sunday.